Chairman Rush, and as you've recently announced your retirement, just let me say that we've appreciated your friendship and the working relationship on energy and commerce, and look forward to you finishing strong here in Congress. Tomorrow marks the one year of President Joe Biden's failed energy policies, jeopardizing energy reliability, energy affordability, and America's energy independence. Today, Russia is on the verge of invading Ukraine. It underscores the importance of energy in national security. Putin wants control of the Black Sea to block American energy imports to Ukraine, the imports that help the Ukrainian freedom fighters, those that are seeking self-determination. This administration is instead helping Putin. On day one, a year ago, President Biden blocked the Keystone Pipes Pipeline, but yet green-lighted Nord 2 for Putin. This makes no sense. Energy is so important to our national security, to our economy, to jobs, to competitiveness. The Energy Information Administration reported energy prices rose more than all commodities over the last year, 60% higher than at the beginning of 2021. And other projections show little to no prospect for relief. We have the highest inflation in 40 years. From the grocery store to the gas pump, inflation is hitting low and middle income Americans the hardest. What Americans pay for energy matters. It drives all aspects of our economy, touching every supply chain and every part of our lives. It matters to farmers who are growing our food, the manufacturers who make the products we need, the truck drivers who deliver them. It matters to the store owners, owners who are struggling to keep their shelves stocked, the restaurant managers who need to keep food on their menus and the lights on. It matters to Americans who are stretching their budgets to feed their families, fill up their gas tanks, drive their kids to school, and get themselves to work. The price, affordability, and reliability of energy is foundational to our way of life and to peace and security around the world. We cannot afford another year of these failed policies. To understand the risk for Americans, look no further than the troubling example of current European and UK energy crises, the skyrocketing rates upwards to three times what we have in the US. It's a direct result of radical policies that drove these nations to rely upon weather-dependent renewables, and increasingly, Russian energy, which threatens Europe. Thankfully for our security, we've had American LNG exports made possible by the shale technology revolution. These exports supported energy and price relief to our European allies and helped drive cleaner energy and power. But that's all being threatened right now. Energy security matters. It matters for economic security. It matters for national security. And it also supports cleaner energy systems. After a year, of President Joe Biden's energy crisis, we should reset our energy policy oversight to focus on priorities for maintaining energy and economic security. That's why Republicans are leading on the securing cleaner energy agenda. Now, specifically regarding today's discussion on pipelines, Russia and China will not stop their campaign to dominate global demand for fossil fuels nor will the real impacts on everyday Americans disappear if we ignore the harmful impacts of replacing pipelines with weather-dependent renewables. We need affordable, uh, affordable and reliable supplies. And anything that we do that impedes affordable, reliable energy will be harmful to our families, our workers, and the nation. America's abundant energy supplies and world-class system of fuels and electric Electricity delivery powers our prosperity, competitiveness, and ultimately, our security. This is what ensures America's manufacturing and industrial competitiveness. This is what provides us strategic resources and the flexibility to confront our adversaries and assist our allies. And the pipelines that deliver these strategic resources are among the safest, environmentally friendly, and cost-effective methods. Today's hearing questions what is necessary to assure people have energy and power they need when they need it most. But assuring people have energy and power when they need it cannot be an excuse for sweeping, duplicative, and deep intrusion by the federal government into every part of the, the complex energy system. It's what this legislative proposal appears to do. 
And given this administration's record, I do not support this expansive authority. I look forward to working with the majority on this, and I hope we can head in a different direction. I welcome our witnesses, and I'll uh, yield back at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.